for having me, guys. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Evan Singh Lutra. To give you a small background about myself, I got involved in the technology space pretty early on. I was the first 100 guys to make apps for the iPhone at the age of 13. I built over 30 apps, uh, sold my first company at the age of 17 for a couple million. Uh, as I understood technology best, that's what I kept investing in. I uh, invested more in technology. I came across Bitcoin for the first time in 2014, and that's when I bought my first Bitcoin. Uh, but I didn't really get involved uh, into the space deeply until 2016, 2017, when my own company started reaching out to me and saying, hey, can you help us with the blockchain? Can you help us with crypto? Uh, this made me look more deeper into the space, and over the next couple of years, I was an early equity investor in companies like Hedera Hashgraph, Ecomi Weave Collectibles, uh, some of the biggest projects in the space today at multi-billion market cap, and I invested in them at a $10 million market cap. Uh, over the last few years, I've been very active in the space, uh, have been definitely investing a lot, supporting a lot of projects, and trying to push the decentralized and Bitcoin movement as much as I can. I've spoken to hundreds of events like this live in person in over 25 different countries. I, I write articles for all the top tier media, Cointelegraph, Forbes, Cryptonomics, Entrepreneur, Hacker Noon, and many more, where I talk about metaverse, NFTs, and play to one gaming before the trends took off. In 2021, I made over 300 investments uh, into the private sales space in the cryptocurrencies. Majority of my investments were around the NFT and metaverse space. I invested in over 100 different NFT projects and also advised about a couple dozen projects that I helped took to market from pre-listing to post-listing, delivering over 50 to 100x return for our investors with hundreds of millions of dollars in volume in, on the day of launch. During this experience, I have come to realize a lot of things that are changing in the world that we live and how the future we live in will be very different from the world that we live in right now. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you have heard about Facebook changing its name to Meta. They own WhatsApp and they also own Instagram, arguably two of the most used apps on this planet. Facebook works around the attention economy. Facebook makes money by getting your attention. Why would the largest social media company in the world change its name to Meta? Because that's where our attention will be in the future. Most people think uh, the Metaverse is a virtual place like we see in the movie Ready Player One or something like that. But I think they're wrong. Uh, it's not a place, it's a time. It's a moment in time. Um, so you know in artificial intelligence, they have the idea of the singularity. It's when artificial intelligence is becomes smarter than human intelligence, that's what we call the singularity. Similarly, I think the metaverse is the moment in time when our digital life matters more to us than our physical life. And this is not an overnight change or a change or invention by a single individual. This is a gradual change that's been happening for 20 plus years. Every important part of our life is going digital. Work, from factories to laptops, from boardrooms to Zoom calls. Friends, from neighbors to followers. Where do you meet like-minded people? You meet them on Tinder, you meet them on Reddit. Games, more kids play Fortnite than basketball and football combined. I'll touch upon this later in my talk. Uh, identity, filters are the new makeup. Stories are your personal billboard. Um, what matters more to you? What you look like in real life or what you look like on Instagram? So everything's going digital, your friends, your job, your identity, and now with crypto, your assets are also digital, your assets are online. Bored apes are the new Rolexes. Fortnite skins are the new skinny jeans. If everyone hangs out online all the time, your flexes need to be online too. So if you play this forward another 10, 20 years, you already step into the metaverse, the moment in time when our digital life matters more to us than our physical life. Our attention used to be 99% on the physical environment. Then came uh, TVs, they sucked the attention, attention dropped down to 80% on the physical. Then came computers, our attention dropped down even more 60% on the physical. Now with smartphones, half of us are always on our phones, even here, right? I mean, you see everybody's on their phones. So our attention is being sucked from the physical to the digital. And where our attention goes, that's where energy flows. Uh, and if 50% of our energy is going to a digital screen, then 50% of our um, focus will also be on this digital screen. Today, it still takes some time and effort to take your phone out of your pocket and look at the phone. In 2012, uh, 2013, and Google Glass had come out, and I was already having a screen in front of my eyes. This is almost 10 years ago, where it was permanently in front of my eyes. I could always have a screen. It was too early for its time, but it's only a matter of time. That kind of technology is in front of everybody's eyes, and you're always focused on a screen. We will go from attention on screens from 50% to over 90%. That's the moment in time when the metaverse starts, because at that point, our virtual life becomes far more important to us than our digital life. Now, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? 
uh, like most things in life, it's neither bad nor good. It's just a very different thing. Nobody will call the metaverse, metaverse in a few here. That's like in 1997 when people will refer to the internet like the information superhighway or the cyberspace. Uh, it's going to become a normal part of our lives and everybody with, around the world would be using it. If you ask me personally, I do not see spending too much of my time in the metaverse, but I'm very blessed and fortunate to be able to say that because I have a very fruitful and a very fulfilling real life. Uh, but I come from a country like India where there's 600 million people who got access to the internet for the first time in 2017, and they come from villages and a uh, very less fortunate part of society that does not have access to the tools and resources we have. They make $300 a month on average. So for them, Metaverse opens up a lot of opportunities. It opens up, it doesn't cost you money to give you attention. So the Metaverse opens up a lot of opportunities for these kind of people. A great example of this is, I was just with Romero Brito, the most licensed artist in the history of the world, who has the largest art gallery in the world in Miami. I was, I'm a private client. I buy his art. I went to visit his art gallery, and it's an amazing uh, experience. But you can't access that art gallery unless you're spending tens of thousands of dollars with Romero Brito. So, but he's also building his metaverse art gallery that anybody could go access, and anybody can go and have as close of an experience in appreciating his art and getting to know his art. So to me, that's the opportunities that metaverse brings to the less fortunate part of society, is having access to these experiences that wouldn't be able or wouldn't be possible before. Another interesting segment of the metaverse is player to win games. What do you think happens to kids who are born five years from now and they are playing these games early on, earning these tokens and NFTs, and they're able to sell this in the open market and make money from day one? This is already happening at a very fast pace in developing countries around the world. In Philippines, we have the great example of Axie Infinity, which had hundreds of thousands of users around the country playing this game every day, earning in-game assets and then selling it to more fortunate people in America or Europe who want to get access to these, these, these in-game assets but don't want to put in the time and effort to earn them. Uh, you see people 60 years old to five-year-old kids playing this Axie Infinity in Philippines to get access to these tools. So this is already happening in a very big space and it's only a matter of time before this happens in other countries also. We're seeing a big wave of player to earn coming in Vietnam, a big wave in all these developing countries. And this is just the beginning. What we will see next is the wave of tokenization that will enable systems and models built around play to earn, learn to earn, drive to earn, fit to earn. I've already invested in the last three months in companies that are rewarding users, driving to earn, um, learning to earn, and they're all doing great. So there's this whole new ideas and models being built that will change how we, how we live, how we play, how we earn, and everything we do. I'm here today to open you to the idea of where the world is moving to. A world full of tokens and systems that align and aligns incentives between all stakeholders, the users, the managers, and the owners of the product. Uh, normally to understand this, if you go back in time, why did we have, um, why do we, in a, in a normal business, there's a user, there's a manager, and there's the owner of the product. They all have different incentives. The owner wants the most money, the user wants the cheapest product by paying the less, and the manager wants to keep everybody happy. So right now the incentives are not aligned. With the with tokens, what you do is when you bring a token into the ecosystem, you make the user a part owner and a part manager. And that time when you align incentive, that allows for exponential growth in businesses. And that's the most exciting part about this. The new world order that I envision will be a world full of token models controlled by DAOs. And if you're here today, you have the opportunity to join this early, is to join this movement early and find a project or a company or an industry you're passionate about and see how you can also build these better systems that push for a more decentralized society. My name is Evan Luthra, and I would like to thank you all for your support, and we're happy to invest in companies that are out here. You can always email me on evan at evanluthra.com and reach me on Instagram at evanluthra. Thank you for your time. Thank you.